We talk a lot about computer parts on the channel, but aside from the CPUs, the GPUs, the RGB, we know you guys also like chairs. Ergo chairs, gaming chairs, budget chairs, expensive chairs, all the chairs. So for every month this year, starting July, we're going to be reviewing one chair na madaling hanapin, madaling bilhin dito sa Philippine market. If you want us to review a particular model from a particular brand, please suggest in the comments. And for this month, we have an entry-level chair. This is the Muso Aeolus Fabric Computer Gaming Chair Navigator with Footrest. Now, this was 5,600 pesos. Do you want to spend 5,600 pesos for this chair? We'll find out, but before that, for sure you don't want to spend too much activating Windows, and our sponsor can help you with that. So, wakana ba sa unactivated Windows mo? Well, lucky you! Pinakabago mo la sa CDKeyOffer.com. Windows 10 and Windows 11 activation codes. Legit, safe, at pinakamura. Madali lang mo order. Hanapin ang Windows version na gusto mo. Piliin ang preferred payment method. Wala pang 5 minutes, nagsindigi ka na para sa Windows mo. Marami na kaming natulungan. Dati, sad and depressed ako. But now, I found the love of my life. Dati, aimless and walang purpose ang life ko. But now, I'm a world-class Zumba instructor. So, web developer ako and content creator for a YouTube channel. And ngayon, ganun pa rin ako, pero activated na yung Windows ko. Kaya ako naghahanap ka ng legit, mura, at original software. Check out cdkoffer.com Check out cdkoffer.com Check out cdkoffer.com Your first interaction with Muso is not the chair itself, but ordering it. They get high marks here. The website is straightforward. Payment and delivery all smooth. Walang problema. I ordered this on June 26 and it was delivered June 28. The box was a bit wide but it can fit on the back of a motorcycle which was how it was delivered. I appreciate that the box is labeled so you know which side is the proper side to open it. Now that I have the chair, next up is assembly and I'm not a good handyman. So, palagi akong kinakabahan sa part na to. But even for me, kaya naman yung assembly. If done by an expert, you could probably assemble it in less than 15 minutes. It took me under an hour as I had to figure out the instructions. Plus, my assistants were not that helpful. While straightforward naman yung assembly, there are some obvious ways they could have made it even easier. There is one pack which contains all of the screws that you need. It would have been great if each compartment in that pack was labeled in line with what you see in the instructions. So kung pinapahanap ka ng instructions na yung mga screws labeled K, there would also be a corresponding K printed on that particular compartment. I also had some issues screwing in the base portion of the chair, the one with the lifting mechanism. The provided Allen wrench was too long, so you can't do a complete turn. You turn it as far as you can, and then you have to remove it and turn it again until the screw finally goes in all the way. Some of the screws don't go in smoothly, like when I was putting together the legs of the chair. One of the wheels was also stubborn going inside. So yes, there are some quality issues, but all were manageable and not unexpected for the price point. What is a bit unexpected is that the zippers do not have any zipper tongues or yung pull tabs. I understand having to cut some corners, pero grabe naman. Magkano ba naman yung mga yun? I don't think I'm even nitpicking. It's just really easy to spot where the craftsmanship or quality is just off. Pero sige. Overall, assembly was very doable by one guy, even if assisted by little monsters who are as helpful as the average minion. So now the chair is ready to go, how was it to use? Now before we start on the chair experience, you should know I'm around 5'9 and 145 pounds. Height and weight are often critical in determining how comfortable a particular chair is for you. And we often get asked in the reviews for our dimensions so that the viewer can figure out if the chair is right for them. Now, I am used to a slightly larger chair area. I, I don't need as large a chair as the Sharkoon. I'm just being comfortable, okay? I mean, it's such a massive chair, so 
I have to um I, I find I find this position to be comfortable actually. That's an absolutely massive chair. But I do want a little room to Indian sit, raise my knee, shift position, which you see me do a lot during my streams. I was expecting to be bothered by the smaller surface area of the chair, pero okay naman once I adjusted to it. I didn't feel cramped and I was still able to stretch as I wanted. All of the things I would usually do, put one leg up, one foot up, I was still able to do. The angle of the back is a little straighter than what I'm used to, so my core felt a little bit more compressed than I was accustomed to. Again, not a big thing and maybe that's even healthier since it forces you to sit up a little straighter. Now, what is a big thing for me is that the chair is fabric. We usually recommend mesh because its porous nature allows more air to reach you and cool you down. Especially if you use the chair in a room without aircon. And that person is me. I never use aircon because I would rather my electricity budget goes to my computer instead of to my aircon. That and the aircon in my home office has been busted for the longest time, but anyway. To make sure I had experience in the chair for long periods, I did a live stream where I gained for three hours straight in the chair. Three hours might not seem long to some younger folk, pero para sa mga tanders kagaya ko, three hours matagal-tagal na yun. It is true that the fabric of the chair feels hotter to use than a mesh chair. Yes, but if you have a fan angled towards you to the side, then you'll be pretty comfortable. For me, sitting in the chair with a fan was comfortable enough. It's when you peel yourself out of the chair and after several hours in a hot environment that you realize, oh, napawisan pala talaga ako. <laughs> so it's not uncomfortable when using the chair, but afterwards, you do feel a bit sticky. Kung mainit, kung matagal mong ginamit. Speaking of sticky, chairs for computers used by guys usually end up being stained by bodily fluids. Bodily fluid which escapes after exertion. And, I want... and by bodily fluids, I mean, of course, sweat. To simulate this bodily fluid, my assistant minion applied slime to some portions of the chair. Now, I have to admit, I was not planning to test this, but since the stain, and it does look like a stain that would happen in the regular course of business of using a chair like this. I decided, sige, let's test cleaning also. For the cleaning test, I used water mixed with detergent, scrub scrub, rub rub, wash out, and then I let it dry overnight. Unfortunately, the next day, that didn't seem to do the trick. Nandun pa rin yung stain, they might have gotten a little smaller, a little lighter, pero very noticeable pa rin sila. Now, to be fair, slime is notoriously difficult to get off everything. For general dust, general dirt, I guess a short spot wash would do the trick. Although, more stubborn stains, I don't know if you have to soak it or something, just something to keep in mind if you do get a fabric chair. Now, I keep mentioning the fabric because I really like its texture compared to the bland smoothness of plastic mesh. Plus, fabric allows you to have designs and aesthetically, fabric chairs can look a bit more distinctive compared to mesh chairs. What's underneath that fabric, the cushioning, will largely determine if you're having a comfortable time. Before that though, I do have to mention I love the padded armrests. I rest my arms a lot on these things and the feel of the soft fabric is soothing, especially compared to the bare plastic of a usual ergo chair. The padding of the chair itself is just alright. The bottom part of the chair, the actual seat, is comfortable enough. The surface you're resting on doesn't feel hard. But this doesn't just cup or support your butt as well as a usual ergonomic mesh chair. For the chair part, the upholstery or padding doesn't feel plush. It's not uncomfortable, but neither is it particularly inviting. Your butt will not scream, don't leave this chair when you sit in it. At best, it's a neutral space, not inviting, but not painful to sit on either. Now the backrest portion feels like it has a little bit more padding, more support, but again, you don't get that feeling of plushness. There's just enough padding to pass as a backrest. The lumbar support below is actually useful, and I hate how these things look like weird add-ons that someone threw in at the last minute, 
but I guess they do have a purpose as it nicely supports the small of your back. Another thing that just feels like a flimsy add-on is the headrest with its elastic band. Parang yun nga, tinapon lang, dinagdag lang at the last minute. But again, it's useful, it supports my head very well, so I kept it on the chair. Padding overall is about what you would expect for a chair of this price. Enough comfort to be labeled as a chair, nothing beyond that. Those are the basic parts of the Muso Navigator, but there are also mechanical functions which assist the core functionality of keeping your torso upright for hours on end. There are the wheels which are very rolly. Props to Muso for these. You can push the chair around with minimal resistance. Good wheels. Also good is the gas lift. Rises up but not too fast, goes down when you're on it but not too slowly. Shading into the not so great is the incline of the backrest. You engage it by pressing up on buttons found underneath the armrests, then you can push back with your body. Now the whole thing is great for an ab exercise but not for comfort. The backrests fit into those predetermined angles so you need to strain to get into one of those angles. If you don't, you won't lock it into place. Plus, once the backrest does lock into place, it takes more effort to unlock it to get it to straighten up again with a loud clank. But the worst mechanical accessory part for me is the footrest which I paid extra for. It's pretty useless, too short to actually be a footrest, and the sliding function is purely manual. You need to slide it out, and that takes some effort. Save yourself some money, I wish I hadn't gotten the footrest version and gotten just the basic standard version of the Navigator. Overall, how do I feel about this entry-level chair? For 5,600, it's decent. I don't feel na naloko naman ako. But I also don't feel wowed either na parang sobrang great value niya, sobrang steel, sobrang fine. I think with a little bit more effort and a little bit more material, this would have been great for the price of 5,600. As it is now, it just feels alright. I like the fabric, I like the color, I like the wheels. The chair part itself is just so-so. If you're looking for a decent chair on a budget, then the Navigator is that. Sakto lang for its price point. It does seem solid enough that it will last for a relatively good amount of time. I doubt though the integrity of the padding, how long it will last, especially if you're a more heavy set individual. It is what you get for this price point. Not great, not bad, sakto lang for the price. So we have five more chairs again for this year. Tune in next month and we'll see what we have then. Thanks for watching.